Hello and welcome back to Minecraft Mine Colony's Byzantine. So last episode we got some cool stuff done, but this episode what we're going to be focusing on is the barracks and the military district. Now before that, between then and now, I've gone around and done some decorations. Over at the retail district, we've decorated this out completely now with hedges, flowers, roads. In fact, a closer look over here and you can see I've used these azalea stairs and some lilacs or peonies behind them as a kind of purple decoration. I think it looks really cool. And if you swing over here over the river, you can see a giant column horse statue, complete with some roses, some bushes, and of course, mahogany trees. And again, we're just splashing statues around now to try and bring up the decoration of the colony. Then as we swoop past our initial supply boat, you'll see who's this rude dude in a red robe. That's right, it's our emperor, Constantine, or well, maybe it's me, in, uh, you know, just chilling on a throne there, guarding the agricultural district. Very cool. It's about time we got this guy plonked down. And behind the industrial area, we have a few mahogany trees, some rose bushes, and some mangrove fences. Now let's swoop on over past the Droman warship and our giant eagle garden plaza. We've decorated this area too. It's got stairways that lead up to the military district now, looking pretty grand. And we've added some more roads and fences and decorations around the agricultural district to make this whole area just a bit more walkable and breathe a bit of life into the zone. We also finished off the seawall and everything looks nice and neat. Amazing. And not forgetting the town hall, next to this we've built a little kind of like shrine. This is like a garden decoration, and I thought we had the flat area next to the town hall. Why not put it to good use and put down this decoration? Looks pretty good. So let's move on to the real meat of this episode, the barracks and the military district. Let's see if we can get this thing built. Now before we move on over there, I'm going to look over here at the Docklands and work out what we're going to be adding over there as well. But not forgetting, we're going to need a few more waystones around the colony as well, because getting around at the moment is a bit of a nightmare. And, oh yeah, the bane of my life. These massive sugar canes and bamboos. We're going to have to sort those out and make sure they don't grow. Now you guys in the comment section gave me a cool trick for how we can do that discreetly. But we'll move on over there in a minute and I'll show you in person what we're going to do to fix our rapid overgrowth problems. But also that's not the only problem we've been having. The whole colony has ground to a complete halt because our warehouse is completely full. Now I reckon we'll be putting a secondary warehouse over in the Docklands district. But for now, we're going to have to go to our own warehouse, number one, this lighthouse that we're sat in, and work out how we can stop this from being full. Sounds like an easy one, right? Empty it out. But the problem is going to persist unless we deal with the problems that are making the warehouse full. Namely, I think crops. We've got two level five farms and that's really cool. But the problem is it's way too much food for our colony right now. In the future, it'll be great, but we've probably got a massive buildup of crops in the warehouse. Anyway, this is just a theory. Let's go and find out. So down we go. Oh yeah, no fall damage. Amazing. And, oh my god, yeah, there's a big old party going on in here. Wait a minute, are you guys having a rave? Is that music I can hear? No, no, it's not music. These guys have nothing to do because they can't deliver their goods. They've got backpacks full and the warehouse is jammed. So let's take a look inside the warehouse block and find out what our numbers are looking like. And okay, we'll sort this by quantity. Oh my god, holy smokes, we've got 12,000 melons, 10,000 carrots, uh, 9,000 cobble deep slate and 6,000 potatoes. The dirt will come in handy and the wheat seeds, well, it's not too bad having 3,000. It's not amazing. Lots of coal, that's ideal. Ooh, there's lots of dark stone in here. 2K raw beef. So we've got too many animal products as well. So we're gonna have to do something to stop this from happening. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to the farms right now and turn off some of their production. Basically, there's no setting to tell these guys to stop farming when the warehouse has a certain amount of food. We're going to have to go over here and yeah, hey, Sklerbetha, how's it going? Problem is, you're too good of a farmer. So we're going to go in here and what we're going to do is we're going to pause the worker. 
This is the only real thing we can do right now. We could empty the farm, but I kind of like the look of it and I want to keep it as is. We're going to go over to the other farm as well and make sure that they're paused as well. I think the guy over here is what, Canaan Bigglesworth's son? Yeah, and he's also too good of a farmer. So yeah, this is a real good point. This is why it's probably a good idea to never really give the workers that you have in the production buildings important recipes. Because when we pause these guys, both Canaan and Sclerbetha, they're not going to be able to do their other recipes as well. So if we needed jack-o'-lanterns for a build, the farmer wouldn't be able to make them because he's paused. So it's a good idea to keep those crafts on workers you're not going to shut down. Okay, well now we've fixed the farms, let's head on over to the warehouse and see if we can just empty this of a few of the melon slices. Oh yeah, look at all these melons. Loads of them. Oh my god, an everlasting beef! Oh, well I'm going to grab that out of here because I can turn that into an eternal steak. I lost my last one, accidentally fed it to a worker, to a civilian. And oh man, what a rookie move. But looks like fate has favoured us and a worker has somewhere around the colony found another everlasting beef. It's pretty good. But before we hop on over to the computer and empty these melons, I want to go over to the university and make sure we're doing some research. Because there are a few researches we're going to need to do to get the docklands up and running. And I think they might be quite long researches, so I've got to make sure those are under wraps. Oh wait, no, and also we've got to sort out this sugarcane over here as well. Must remember to do that. But let's get some string out of here, because this is what I'm going to be using to stop the crops from growing too big. So, aha, uh -huh, gaze upon these wonderful plantation fields. They're a bit too good, though. And yeah, I don't want to turn off Apotheosis, because it's never really good to delete a mod, or change a mod, because you never really know what it's doing in a mod pack. So what we're going to do first up is trim to about the level that we want. And oh man, it, it feels so good to be digging sugarcane that's grown this high. Look at these suckers fall. Oh yeah, it's raining sugar. White gold. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting string on top of the sugarcane. And what this does is, check it out, it makes a very discreet and almost invisible line of string on top of the sugarcane. This means the sugarcane can't grow upwards and it's just a really effective way of stopping our sugarcane from growing out of control, which it was really doing. And this trick is amazing. It works on cactus as well, and probably even bamboo. Ah, so there we go. As night falls, you can see the entirety of the sugarcane has been trimmed, and the string is working wonders. Now, also, we can actually just go into the config files of Apotheosis and turn off the sugarcane growing that way. But string is also a good option if you don't want to mess around with any configs, because sometimes people don't like doing that, it can be a bit tricky. So rise and shine, another glorious day on the colony. Oh my god, maybe it's time to get rid of these uh, melon slices, I forgot to put them in the computer while I was there. But before we head on home, we're going to head over to the university and again, make sure we're doing some research. Cannot put that off any longer, need to make sure we're always at least researching something. Now, I've got to be very careful not to click the post box to the right, because the size of this mod pack means we're waiting in a loading screen for like 10 minutes. Anyway, here we go, improved swords. Oh, right, so before we build the combat academy and the archery, we need to do some research, and this research is locked behind having a barracks at level 3. So before we build those two buildings, and before we even research them, we have to get that barracks up and running and at level 3. So, okay, we can't do those. What research can we do then? Well, we could do Consume Arrows. This is going to upgrade our archers. It's a good move now that we've got a Fletcher as well. Oh, we can research Iron Armor for more durability. But yeah, we're going to need some blocks of iron for this research. Quite a few as well. Six and six. Twelve blocks of iron total. But it looks like Night Damage with Quick Draw also needs some iron blocks. So I reckon we've probably got loads in the warehouse. We can go and check on that. And regeneration, of course. It needs a couple of emeralds. Or no, one emerald. But this means that guards flee under 20% HP. That's really huge. We need anything we can do. Anything we can do to preserve the lives of our guards is going to be really important going forwards. Because when the big raids come, the guards, well, we need to make sure they're running away. And not just fighting to the death. It's brave, but it's also stupid. 
So over here to Braven Boulevard, and let's take a look in the warehouse, see if we can find any iron. I'm not sure how much we've got, but I'm, I'm sure we've got at least some, right? Iron? Oh my god, holy smokes, check this out. 625 iron? Well, let's see if we can find it and uh, suck it out of these racks. Here's 31 over here, lovely. Now another thing we can do is middle click on the racks because the couriers are really bad at sorting the racks. So when we middle click, it basically tidies up the rack and can often create two, three, four, five or six extra slots. And that's gonna be pretty good to help our couriers maintain, you know, a decent and orderly working, well-organized warehouse. Anyway, let's see if we can find these iron ingots. They've gotta be in here somewhere. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh my god, stacks and stacks and stacks of this stuff. Well, we'll get a whole bunch of these, use our crafting table on a stick to make ourselves some iron blocks. We might need some iron ingots as well, so we're not gonna convert them all into iron blocks, but 21 should be great for us for the time being. Well, okay, back to the research then. And let's cook up this everlasting beef into, oh yeah, delicious eternal steak. Amazing. So we're back over here at the university and let's take a look. We've got loads of iron, loads of emeralds. What can we spend this on? Skills, citizen block play speed plus 15%. 128 iron ingots. Well, that's a no brainer. That's gonna speed up our builders by loads. So we're gonna research that. And hello, what's this down the civilian tree? More books and nurture. Well, yeah, now that we've got schools and libraries, it's well worth putting some points into these researches as well. We've got to pick one or the other, and I think we've got some spare books in our backpack, so more books is the one we're going to learn. And here we go, more books. Let's research this one too. So that's four of four research in progress. Okay, amazing. So, okay, what are we gonna do now? Well, let's have a look around. Um, I think it's about time we start thinking about what buildings we're gonna build. We're gonna need to build a barracks. First up, we're gonna build a dyer's hut. We need a dyer, and why not? Let's build that hut right now. I think this is gonna live quite nicely over at the Docklands area. Now, a concrete mixer's hut. Oh, wait, no, what's this? Oh, no, this requires some research at the university. Oh, no. Oh, in fact, I know exactly what this is locked behind. It's locked behind having a crusher's hut. Ah, well, we'll have to build one of those to level three and then do the research for a concrete mixer's hut. So we're also going to make sure our builders are continuing to build and we keep pulling Molly Moo off of the university basement. But I think it's time to see if we can find the controller. Here it is and put her back on the case. We need to make sure that, well, she might not have the materials to build this yet. We need to make sure she starts digging out the area. So we'll put her on that and rely on the other builders this episode to do the other builds. Right, okay, so we have the Dyer's Hut, but we're of course gonna need a barracks. Yeah, right, this is gonna be at level three for us to continue with our military district. It's a very simple build as well. So let's head on over to the Garden of Hoobies and make our way to the new military district. Oh wait, hang on a sec, what's this? Teddy Ronebone has stink lines. His food is too raw to eat. What's he got in his backpack? Oh my god, eggs! Why are you eating eggs, Teddy? What is wrong with this guy? Raw eggs. What a what a what a crazy fool. Get yourself over to the restaurant, my friend, and have yourself a steak on me. Steak and chips? Fish and chips? I don't know, like a pumpkin pie? Find something, Teddy. Anything that isn't raw eggs. Oh my god, what a numpty. Anyway, stop hiccuping and go and sort yourself out. Now we're going to have to put some stairways in because he's taking the long way around here. And yeah, it looks like the animal farms are a little bit isolated over here. Anyway, forget that. That's an infrastructure problem for another day. Today, we are working on the military district. Let's look at the barracks first. And see what this looks like. Wait a minute, what, wait a minute what's this? Birch? What a horrible building. This can't be right. Oh wait, it's the wrong pack. It's switched us to antique pack for some reason. Anyway, back to Byzantine. And here we go, barracks. It's got an alt barracks and a regular barracks. Okay, so this is the alt barracks. It looks pretty good, made out of wood, but of course that'll change as it goes through the levels. Let's move it over and see how impressive this thing looks. Oh yeah, pretty good, level one. Two, three, four, and five. Oh yeah, a very pretty looking building. It looks like it's sunken into the ground a bit as well. Let's raise it up. Oh yeah, so it's got some height on it. 
Whoa, it's got a lot of height. Wow, this rises up quite high. Okay, there we go. That looks like the height it's supposed to be at. Well, yeah, I really love this building. This is a really attractive, good-looking barracks. A perfect one to get to level 3 for the research. But what does a regular barracks look like? Okay. And this looks a bit more square, a bit more traditional, doesn't it? It looks a bit more like a keep, which is, I guess, what barracks are supposed to look like. So, yeah, pretty okay. It's a, it's a square. Let's spin it around a bit. Okay, yeah. Oh, right. So, this barracks has a section of wall attached to it. And it looks like this at level 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, this is a pretty good-looking barracks as well. Now, it could be that we do build two barracks. We're going to need a lot of guards. Um, but I think we're going to focus on one barracks for now. And we're going to prioritize the alt barracks. Because in my mind, that's a cooler-looking building. But let me know what you guys think at home. Do you think the alt barracks is a cooler-looking building than the main barracks? Let me know in the comment section, and I will heart and like the comment. Yeah, this is looking really perfect right here in the very corner of our colony. This is probably the furthest away that there is in the entire city from the town hall. But we've got lots of room here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And you know what? I feel happy to pull the trigger on this and get a worker over here working it. So the barracks from the Byzantine pack. It's a very impressive build, but let's face it, most of the buildings from the Byzantine pack are pretty impressive and if you're building a style at home if you're trying to pick a style for your colony that you're running at home then you couldn't go far wrong with byzantine honestly no other style really has had this much work love and attention thrown into it anyway yes yeah, so the builder was hard at work she had to build a big old mountain of dirt before she could even begin with the building now you might see her zipping in and out of a secret little tunnel on the left in the mountain. Basically, I dug through that, put down some rails, so she was going to have an easier and quicker time getting over to this building. And it really has sped up her build. She's coming backwards and forwards now with loads of materials and getting this building done really quickly, considering its size, because this has a massive footprint. The build itself uses stone brick, which is kind of a new one for, uh, for the Byzantine style, but I love to see it. Also, lots of wood, essential for those early buildings. And I also love the fortress style that this kind of building has, with that wall at the front and the tower on the left. And then capping it off with some wooden shingles on top looks pretty amazing. Now we needed to get this building from level 1 to level 3, but I didn't want to time lapse the whole process, it took forever. So here we go with a natural fade-in as it goes from level 1 to level 2. And then the building gets even more grand as it goes to level 3. Nice to see. Anyway, let's jump in and take a look. Oh, now gaze upon the wondrous sight that is the fully completed alt barracks up to level three. Man, what a colossal build. A big building, a big footprint, but let's take a look inside. Okay, yeah, oh, a nice big stairwell over here that curves around, I love that. Got a lectern over here with, what's this? Gothic war? Bit of history, is it? Ah, uh, right, so this is one of those tidbits that the style maker hinted at. It's a history book that explains some of the Byzantian history. Ah, oh, that's very cool. So if you're a bit of a history buff, Make sure you're on the lookout for these lecterns because they do have a bit of knowledge and a bit of lore behind the city itself. Anyway, keep going and this looks like the kitchen. Important because, yeah, guards have to eat. Aha, uh -huh. now here is the barracks block itself. When we click on this, there's a few options here. Uh, we can hire spies. Now you can only do this when a raid is underway, but if you have gold like we do, you can press hire spies. It costs five ingots. And what this does is it shows up enemy barbarians through the walls in real time. So you can always see where the last stragglers of a raid are hanging out. A very important tool, very worth the gold. But other than that, a barracks is supposed to be comprised of barracks towers. Each barracks tower kind of works like a guard tower, except with every level of a barracks tower, the barracks gets an extra guard. So I think you can get four barracks towers in a barracks. That means four times five. You can get 20 guards per barracks. It could be 25. I might be wrong there. But uh, yeah, that's a pretty big number. 
There's also a stables down here as well, looking pretty cool. But where are these barracks towers? Aha, yeah, here is a barracks tower. So like I said, yeah, it's exactly the same as a guard tower. The only difference is as it levels up, you get an extra guard for every level. And it looks like building the barracks to level 3 has automatically also built the barracks towers to level 3 as well. So no upgrades required, that's really good news for us. So there we go, that's a look at the barracks. But what else are we going to be building this episode? Well, I think it's pretty important that we get the Dyer's Hut down as well. The barracks is just one building, and I want to get two done this episode. So I've got the hut, let's see if we can find the perfect spot for it. Now, we're going to have to see how big this thing is first, and this is a nice big flat area. So why don't we use that to our advantage, and see what it looks like over here. So the Dyer's Hut, it's in luxury crafts, and yeah, it looks... Well, actually, this looks really small. I was expecting this to be much bigger, in fact, in other style packs, it is way bigger and honestly way too big. But this looks like exactly the kind of size I'd expect a Dyer's Hut to be. Not exactly tiny, but pretty small. And it's thin enough to squeeze into most areas. Very cool, well what's it look like at different levels? We'll lower it and take a look. Level 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Ooh yeah, a pretty attractive good looking building. I'm on board with this. Well, okay, this looks like it's going to fit in perfectly at the edge of the Docklands. So let's head on over there and see if we can put this into position. Aha, yes, look at this. Oh, man, it fits like a glove just here in front of the Siege Works and the Droman warship. Okay, pull the trigger and let's get another builder on this. Now, this is a bit closer to the boys, so we'll pick one of the boys to build this. Well, okay, we've had one let's build. Let's watch this one go up as well. So this build is going to be much more simple because, yeah, the Dyer's Hut is really tiny. It's also pretty much only made out of wood. And the builder was pretty close as well, so this thing flew. Look at this guy, Speedy Gonzalez over here, tearing it up and building this building in absolutely no time at all. Well, let's jump in and see what the Dyer's Hut is about. And here we go, yeah, now this is only level 1, we didn't really have the time or resources to build this up to level 3 just yet. It's been a long old recording episode, so we're going to stop it here at this level 1 building. But, before we do end, we're going to have to hire a dyer, a die, a die man, a die dude. We're going to have to hire a die dude to go inside the dyer's hut, because there ain't going to be no dying done without a dude to die. Unless we die another day. What do you reckon, Jensen? Oh, that's my favourite Bond movie! Oh really? Well, good to know. And we're going to head on over to the tavern, see if we can hire some new dudes to be dyers. But before we do that, let's go over here to the town hall and find out what kind of population we have now. Ah oh, yeah, amazing. So we have 79 citizens, and we can have up to 100. Now I do have to remind myself to go into the config and up that so we can get up to like 250, because at the moment we're stuck at 100, because the config is set to a maximum of 100 dudes. And whoa, wow, take a look at that number. 25 of 64, we can have 64 knights. I can't imagine any barbarian horde can withstand the power of 64 Byzantinian knights. Anyway, over to the tavern, let's recruit some dudes. So who's over here? Who wants to join the crew? Ooh, Sal Caledonia. How's it going, my friend? Oh yeah, six emeralds, we have those. Welcome to the colony, my friend. McGinger the Mahogany. Ooh, Honeycomb. Now, I'm not sure we have any honors. No, nope, none in the backpack. But we do have loads in the warehouse, so we'll definitely get you along. Have some baked potatoes for now, so you don't run away. There we go. Back to the pub. Molly Moon Nerd. Well, we only, you only want hay bales, so we might as well get you in. Got those on me. Let's get you in. Boom. Welcome to the crew. Of course, McGinger the Mahogany can never pass up a mahogany name. Then Kapolka Cannon, you want Honeycomb as well. Good stuff. Drury Dolphin. Ah, so Decoy the Quick only wants... Nether Quartz, and we have loads of that. So, here you go. Here's some Nether Quartz. Welcome to the crew. Oh, wow. He already changed into a, an archer. Amazing, he looks fantastic, and that's a very quick recruitment. So we've got a range of new dudes. Let's head on over to the Dyer's Hut and see if we can pick the best one of our new dudes to be a Dyer. 
Man, yes, I'm gonna need some waystones for this garden, because can you imagine another waystone right in the middle of this area here? I think it's the perfect place for it. So here we are at the Dyer's Hut. Manage workers, let's show the employed ones, and take a look. We're gonna pick from the guards, the archers, the knights, and look for the perfect dude. Decoy the quick, a fresh hire, and oh my god, wow, 31 creativity and 25 dexterity. That's absolutely going to be the best guy we're ever going to find. Let's hire him. All right, and let's get him over here as well, see what he looks like. Oh, wow, yeah, that is the perfect dyer's uniform. Look, he's got aprons and overalls that are absolutely covered in messy dye. There's even a bit of green on his hat here as well, look. Amazing. Oh, yeah, he definitely looks like a dyer. He looks amazing. That skin is perfect. And he should get to work creating all the dyes, dyeing all the wool, dyeing all the glass and other stuff as and when our colony needs it. Amazing! Well, a massive thank you for watching this episode, my dudes. This episode, we built the barracks up to level three. I'm going to get the research underway pretty soon so that we can actually build the archery range and the combat academy next episode. And also, maybe we'll look into the concrete mixer and the crusher, which we need to finally finish off our industrial buildings. I've been Stjin. A massive thank you to all of my Patreon members and my YouTube members. You guys are amazing and I love you. Do consider becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Hop on over to our Discord and say hello. But until next time, hit like and subscribe and take care.